Earthshaker to kind of close the distance there as well as the Beastmaster. Hmm. Interesting to see the Warlock being picked up. Five mm, wonder if it's going to be Support Warlock or an Offlane Warlock. I've seen both work. Um, support Warlock is a bit eh, just because you need levels and you kind of need to rush that Midas and then into Ag, sort of, I feel. But, you know, I mean, we've seen what Puppy does when he just can't farm up. Suddenly, f fourth most farmed hero on the map. Yeah, Puppy knows knows how to just sit back and not die. That is for sure. So Scareface is the Ben out the A, expecting that this warlock is going to be in the off lane. I think yeah, it could probably be in the off lane. Could be Zai's hero. Who knows? Um, Team Secret they need to ban out either a carry or an off laner. I think. And what what kind of hero would be would be dangerous here? Maybe something that picks up a defusal blade. Um, Five seconds. Hmm, the Slark. I always said PL because PL they used to ban the PL in every, like in the first two games. It's not banned now, so scary faces could technically go get, go back for that. And he does pick up the Diffusal Blade, so you can technically deal with those golems. Yeah, the Beastmaster can get the Diffusal here too, but not too likely. Uh, I mean, ideally you, yeah, there okay, it is. Yeah, yeah. Ideally, you have a hero that naturally wants to go for a defusal anyway. Yeah. Like picking, a, like buying defusal on a beastmaster. Yeah, it works. But at the same time, you kind of want necro books. You want the blink. You want refresher. You want boots of travel. So, um, I like this. I like this PL pick a lot actually. But at the same time, I think Team Secret they knew that it was coming. I don't think that it was unexpected for them. Not at all. So, you know what? Last pick for Secret. Another support if that's a warlock offlane. What do they want? Five what do they want remaining. to try to deal with these illusions? As well as just the solid draft in general from Scary Faces and the Sand King. Okay. We're in store for some epic uh, epic uh, epicenters. So let's get into it. I mean, this is going to be game three. This is a big game for Secret. They're currently sitting at uh, one and one. I was wrong with the zero one. Uh, I forgot that they had played Goomba earlier on. And I even casted that match too, I just forgot. My memory's just terrible, but yeah, this is very important for scary faces though. They need to they need to get this win. That is a huge deal to them. Yeah, I mean it's it's huge for both. Like even though once you say um a secret is one and one right now? Yeah. yeah. Even though they're one and one, you kind of need this or kind of want this one to, you know, secure that spot. Don't really want to risk a tiebreaker situation. So both teams definitely want to clinch in this win, and I think both of them have shown that they're very eager to take it as well. And I like this from Team Secret, running the Warlock on the support and giving the Sand King to Zai so that he, you know, can play a bit more greedy on that one. I like this a lot because I feel the Sand King can do much more when when he gets a very early blink. Um, I don't really think the Warlock does much as soon as he has, like, sure you get an earlier Midas and Agnims, but... I feel like a Sand King can contribute much more to the, to the game if he gets more farm. So I like this distribution a lot. All right. So we got Quista playing the Fatal Answer from the SFZ side. We got Ramsey's at the stand in playing pretty well on the Beastmaster now. And then uh, Exnart on the Earthshaker with Shadowway on the line. Then right behind them is State 21 picking up the Rifleman of his own in the uh, Sniper. And on the dire side, we have Tinky Winky, aka RTZ, on the Troll Warlord. We have Zai sitting there already as the Sand King. Puppy actually looking towards the offlane, probably just rotating back in as the Warlock. And S4 playing the Brewmaster, leaving Kuroki on his signature Rubik. So this game is going to be a pretty long one, seeing as to how the PL needs to get quite a bit of farm. And, uh,. The sniper as well. If he doesn't get going early on, then he's got to build it up. Gonna be a bit of a bit of a scuffle for this first rune. Let's see. S4. He's ready and waiting. He'll see the sniper and kind of just give up his position, unless they want to go for a bit they of. Can't a... go for the skill. Oh, oh, S4. Nice Fissure coming in. He gets the rune right in front of his face, and now the strapple gets dropped down. S4 might just be dead. Just second strapple coming in. Yeah, he just looks to man fight it up, and he knows he's gone. And that's gonna be Ramsey's getting the first blood. That's a hell of a way to come out swinging. Off the bat on the third game, great. So vision. not only, yeah. So not only get the uh, did the sniper get the rune, he also you know got experience and gold from that kill. So I think that is his. Oh, no, it's just a self coming in. Okay, so 
good start for SFZ. Yeah, if if you know State had had that first blood, you know we see Boots probably coming out to him already, and uh, he'd be making Troll's life just a little bit harder. But Tinky Winky does have himself some tangos. He's got his poor man shield, and he's ready to go. And I mean that's that is the best possible situation for SFZ to coming into this. Like they they started their first game pretty aggressively too. So if they can keep the momentum going with that, we're in we're in for a pretty good match. Yep. I like this I like this lane setup from Secret as well. Running dual offlane with this warlock and, and yeah. Sand King. That's pretty good. It's tough um, to kill too. And he also yeah. leveled up the passive first too on the Sand King. So oh, I like this a pushing lot. the lane a ton. And also harassing the PL, so yep. I like this a lot. And looking at the top lane, I mean even though S4, sure he died, but now he's catching up in farm, and it's not even like Ramsey's is trading farm efficiently. I'd argue that at, at the moment, Secret is getting the most out of every lane. And both of them are going for 2 1 tiers, and there's no way the illusions from Quista can survive through this, so I want to see if he goes for any more in the caustic, but who knows? Could be some weird uh, split of ability points. I'm not sure if you want more though. I think one point in it is almost enough. This is the early um, start. Yeah, I think I think getting a level two on your burst strike is way too important because the level one burst strike is like it's the range is way too short. You can basically forget it. Yeah. Uh, so you kind of need the the second point in the burst oh, strike. And, Zai. Oh, Zai. He might be dead here. He still has a skill point to use yeah, though. Yeah. Okay, they decide not to commit fully. Hmm. Afraid that he might just sandstorm and just sit there. So. SSE just bullying right now, but you know in terms of last hit secret on top They're doing their uh, their early game job. I Like this from the rush shaker though. He's rotating into the mid lane and just being a threat towards RTZ Just a threat of a Fisher coming in prevents RTZ from playing a bit more aggressive. Oh, and there it is yeah. It's still okay though, just because he keeps RTZ from farming because RTZ was actually out farming the sniper by quite a bit and This gives our, like the sniper a bit of an edge again the top lane, they find Ramsey's. Ah, he's dead. Yeah, he's fast. He's ah! got a stick. He's good. Early boots coming in to help. Yeah. And they didn't want to run into the creep wave either, so. Deciding to back off. The boar's still harassing them, too. Look at it go. S4's going to be a little careful here, but he's got the backup for Brubick. Never mind. And, uh, end cart seems to, seems to be to me that he, uh, went for the, the boots in triple clarity, so he's been spamming off fissures like crazy. I mean, he's definitely going to be one of the key points if Ramses can stay alive in this lane. And the main, they fit Puppy. Oh, they find us 4 too, probably. but they tell Kinesim over the Fissure and the Axes aren't enough to pick up the kill. They didn't even hit Kuro. Oh no, and you said Puppy just died down bot, so... Yeah, they played good. a bit aggressive and they just found the Phantom Lance onto, a, onto an Impale and Puppy was just food. That's one of the Zai bad actually things. Zai actually opted to go for the double Sandstorm. So he is prepared to go back into the jungle if he needs to. He needs to catch up on farming. He actually goes for phase boots. All right, last hit like crazy. Sure. Let's go for the lane. Why not? Yeah. Doesn't need the arcanes. Why not? He's focusing on farming right now. And that's something that'll help him farm up like crazy. And, and I guess he doesn't need a burst strike right now. Like he has one level in it, but that's, I guess it's okay considering that they're not going for kills. If anything, it's more to. They just orientated to just farm in this lane. They don't really want to go for kills. They can't really go for kills anyway. Still really tough to kill a PL off anyway. Doppelganger, such a damn strong ability, but what else we got coming out here? Yeah, and I mean, Actions. the Warlock before level 6 doesn't offer any offensive... Like, he doesn't really have an, any offensive spell, really. Like, the, the Shadow Word, yeah, I guess. Or the last... Yeah, yeah Shadow Word. Oh, bottom lane again. Sai, just being harassed. He can Sandstorm if he wants to. Yeah, there's a Sandstorm, so... They back off, but he heals up, and he's actually turning around just a bit. He pops the phase boots. Oh, the spikes missed from Shadowway. Mm, he's yeah, got his own another spikes. burrow if he wants to. Yeah. But uh, this PL is now out of mana, whereas Sai, he's been very, you know, he has a lot of, like, he has Puppy to region him up, and he has a clarity as well if he wants mana, so. A lot of sustain on this lane, and quite frankly, I think Secret is just content with making sure that they get the most out of their lanes. Um... RTZ actually rotated into the jungle. I'm not a big fan of that because he gave Sniper a lot of space in the mid lane. But I guess Sniper at some point is just going to be able to outlane him anyway. So, still, secret 
getting a lot during this laning stage. I gotta say, the Earthshaker helping out both top and mid most of the time and getting them some good success. There was that, you know, death up top for the Beastmaster, but it's not Bottom too bad. Lane. Again, they're jumping in. Quista, he's stunned up. They get the upheaval out, and he just doppelgangers away. Shadow away. Should be okay, too. Yeah, they, they all back out, but oh, uh, here comes TZ the TZ. For this. He's gonna dive in. Yeah, needs just one more hit, and there it is. And they dive on a Quista, too. He should be dead as well. No doppelganger, and wow. all across the map, we got three kills happening, and Secret just come out swinging again. Yeah. I, I was honestly, I wasn't really... I wasn't really too convinced that they could get this kill with Secret, just knowing that they can extend that far, and pretty nice rotation from them. But again, the Sniper is just free firing mid, and RTZ is just letting him. Yeah, I guess fine. they're content with this, but... Yeah. He's only got phase boots. He's not going to be too big, right? You know, this happened last game too, with the RTZ Sniper. <laughs> oh, God. And are they looking for early Roche already? Nah. Nah, they're just grouping up to make the most out of this rune that they're getting. Are they giving bomb charges to everybody? Yep. Mm, top lane, Brewmaster is rotating back. Huh. But yeah, this top lane did not go the way of SFZ. They imagined this probably a lot differently. But Kuroki and S4 playing this one really, really good. And Kuroki now, almost level 6 actually, wow. That's insane. I think he's going to be ready to steal spells already. And there's some solid spells to steal, like you said, the Fissure, the Lance is good. Uh, seeing shrapnel isn't too bad. But he doesn't more so the ultimates. The yeah. roar, the, the impale, the hex, the finger, so many good spells for, mm -hmm. for Rubik to steal in this game. This is Kuro's game to, to shine in. We'll see. Uh, if you can ever steal finger, like that's that's a big point in the game. They're pinging the yeah, they're killing puppy. James oh. steals oh. Fissure out, roar for Ramses. Nah, he can't get in range. That's the second time he's tried to fissure out mid, and they just don't end up on the right side. And at the same time, though, like that one ward that they have on the top rune, basically, um, he, Puppy knew that the rotation was coming in. He didn't see the Earthshaker, but he knew that somebody was there. Um, so, yeah. SFZ, they want to try to make something happen, but they can't really find anything, really. And I think they shouldn't, honestly. I think they can just... You know, sit back and just farm him up on the sniper, farm up Quista on the sniper. Quista might be dead off. here. He's gonna get chased down, they're looking for the bash, the doppelganger's up. There's some backup coming in, he gets slowed down, the assassinate's coming on in, and it seems that Arteezy's gonna get traded out for Quista. Fissure on top of Zai. He does have a not a burst right Fissure actually blocked the whole team out, and Zai's just gonna... Oh, oh, they get the spikes, never mind, Shadowway's here, Hex is out, and that should be another kill for State 21, but nope, Shadowway gets it. And well played, well deserved. Two for one. Trade in the favor of S of Z. Not bad. Yeah, I like this much more. Like, I don't think they should be the ones initiating gangs or fights. I think they just should counter gang and counter initiate. Or he might be dead here. Quista gonna get the lance out, but he just just turns around and splits on top of them. And he's gonna go for this tower instead with iteration. But a sun coming in, gonna go on to Puppy. And oh man, there's a nice little bit of use of the cyclone from that storm brewing. Can they get any kind of slow? Any kind of roar? They have anything? A roar. Roar. SF, he's going for the axe throw. Max range and hits, but the stick charges from S4. He's running away as fast as his little legs can let him. And uh, now he's going to get healed up too. The Fissure coming out, going to connect on a Puppy. Oh the god. The Roar slow, the Roar on top, and yeah. Puppy's life is forfeit it seems. Well, as long as he saves S4, that's all that matters. And the Steel and the oh, Roar comes in from Kuroki. Yep. They got to kill him. They want to kill him here. But they can't. This was really sad for SFZ. They, S4 even got the tower kill. They were so close to denying it as well, but he still got the tower kill. Um, they pretty much only got... Yeah, they only got Puppy out of this. Nah, yeah, they only got Puppy out of this, so... Defensive TP? Not the best of trades. S4 gets stunned up. There's not much else to follow up, though. Mm, they're looking for it. They want it. Kuro's on the side flanking. He's got the roar on deck. Not gonna... Not gonna make it happen. In the meantime, RTZ farming up Ancients. Sniper's still completely uncontested. Like, he actually had a really rough rough time in the beginning. He was actually missing a lot of last hits that he shouldn't because they were quite easy. But now he's just, you know, farming away because nobody's contesting him. Oh, Kuroki. Okay, he uses the roar to kind of split them up and well played on that one, but... 
it seems that Ramses is going to chase him down with his haste rune. They want to get this kill very badly, but there's some more supportive TPs coming in, seeing as though Ramses might overextend. Zai has phase boots. He's going to pop those and try to catch on up. He's got level oh. 4 in the spike. Oh, he gets slowed by the boar. That slow is so strong, honestly. Yeah. What is it? It's 40%? 40%, yeah. yeah. It's disgusting. And Sniper just knocking on the tier 1 mid. Again, he's completely uncontested. Has a Sanj already. Building towards Sanji Asha, probably. Seems S4. A pretty standard build. Oh, S4. We do not want to do this. He oh. has his hold up in four seconds. Oh, here comes the snipe, and the split comes out just in time. And now they turn it. What do they got? They got the Cyclone there onto the sniper. They're going to be able to stun him up and lock him down, possibly. Yep. Lifting him up, the roar comes in on the puppy. He wants to drop the rock here and make this a multi-man stun with the epi channeling. Look at that damage coming in from Zai. He'll be able to bring down one second cyclone onto the sniper as uh, he actually picked up a kill on a puppy. They're ready to just line up everything onto him though. Goes into the tree line, gets stunned, gets dropped. And that's going to be Eknar picking up a kill onto the brewmaster. And Kuroki actually stole the finger? Wow. And makes it a three for two while brewmaster's still running away. But a buyback. Uh oh, he's committing heavily for this one right now. Gonna drop a shrapnel on top of Arteezy. This is a big kill for him to get. Gonna get the right clicks out there. Arteezy's still alive for now. While well, a bit of a steal on the shrapnel comes in from Kuro, but the snipe should be enough. Actually, it's Arteezy dying to Ramses, but turning around, dropping triple shrapnel on top of State. Kuro going big with these steals right now. And now they even find the Beastmaster, but is there enough to take him out? No, no, one's have, no one has any mana. And Secret tying up the game. And making it a three for three and a dieback on the sniper. Kuro is such a boss, honestly. Like he did so many things in this team fight: stealing the finger, returning it onto the Earthshaker, stealing the shrapnel, killing the sniper with it. Uh, I don't know. Kuro playing so well right now. That's what you expect from Kuro when he plays Rubik. It's, it's honestly his hero. And once again, I think SFZ playing a bit too aggressive. Like that sniper buyback. I mean. Yeah, they got the troll, but... If, if Shrapnel hadn't been stolen, that would have been, like, the perfect buyback. But yeah, Shrapnel being true. stolen screwed him over hard. <laughs> so, we may have a bit of a run in here. Eknar dropping the fissure and just backing away. Never mind. Smoke coming out from the line and the Beastmaster. They do have Roar up. They also have the Finger up. Actually, they don't have the Finger up. It's like four seconds, seconds though. it's fine. Yeah. Can they find a kill on the Tinky Wiki is the question, though. Finger coming in. Yeah, look at that damage. Spike on top, too. Shadowway gets a very easy kill. A very good rotation from SFZ. This is this is much needed. They just need to go for pickoffs. I don't think they should team fight, considering Secret's team fight lineup is really scary. With like the Warlock ultimate mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. with the doo 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 doo. So yeah. I like this probably gonna are they gonna go for this tier one? Well they're gonna be backstab, but I think they should go at least try this. Smoke coming out, I'm not sure. Who's gonna get this? Is there still Roar? No, it's only Shrapnel. Rubik still has Shrapnel. Oh, the Blink Dagger is revealed from S4. They get the Fissure out, but not gonna stop the split. State 21 is more than likely dead. Gonna get lifted up, gonna get pushed back onto the high ground, and gonna end up falling to Zai's Sandstorm. Wow, and now Shrapnel's to chase it on the Quista, too. That seal just paying off dividends. This Kuroki is now dominating. Ooh. And Zai picks off a Blink off of this, so. If that one gets delivered, they can do even more. Like, they had a pretty, I want to say, poor initiation already. It was just like, it's just a brewmaster, quote unquote, blinking in and, and you know, clapping. But now they also have to blink Burrow. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, Kura's also not too far away from his own blink, so. Quite scary for scary faces at this point, considering, you know, what their lineup is. This sniper is really squishy, but if Kuro keeps stealing these important long-range initiation spells with the shrapnel and the fissure, even the roar, it's gonna be really difficult for um, sniper to just farm even. Maybe he'll become one of those targets that you just want to blow up instantly and just get on the way with the fight. We'll have to see, but a smoke actually coming in aggressively from the SFZ side. Where are they gonna go? Are they going down towards, actually going up towards the secret shop. And trying to catch somebody off guard. Oh, Phantom Lancer. Quista. Oh. Yep. Gonna get impaled and gonna get just dropped down by the doo doo doo. He can't handle the Darude. And in the meantime, the smoke broke, but we got a kill from Rams. It's not a killing spree himself. Taking down S4. As RTZ TPs on into this fight, he's gonna be able to get Shadowway down. Gonna get the bash. Shadowway makes the TP out. Woo! By the skin of his teeth. And now we gotta jump in onto 
State 21 on the sniper, and he's just gonna drop. Even with the strap on the curl, that's enough. And what a hell of a fight. Like, it's just all over the place. Mass TP's coming in. It's everybody going all over. And now, is gonna make his first attempt towards the Roche. Honestly, I think Rubik should, when as soon as he uses the stolen shrapnel, should also just like, ho ho ha ha. Because this is the ultimate sniper counter, right? You just have your own shrapnel, you have your own sniper, basically. That's shrapnel, man. You can kill the sniper. Yeah, getting slowed up, getting caught out on the side. And do we see Ramses try to stop this? The Hawk is out, and they can see this completely. But blinking back, fighting a two man impale again. Double clap and the fissure from Kuro, stealing that one away. From the Earthshaker, what the hell? Kuro playing out of his mind right now, and now the Aegis going over to the troll from Team Secret. Arteezy will be more than happy to just take that one up. And Ramses, oh. Uh, oh, being cute, but there's, oh, okay, he never mind. Yeah, he's fine. Kuro has enough gold for his blink, and now the shenanigans begin. If he goes for the blink, yeah, he does. Yeah, there it is. Okay. I mean, he could rush straight Ags, like, just two seconds peels. Spell steals are insane. I'm not even sure if he has a mana for it, though, since he went for Triangle Boots instead of um, Arcanes. Oh, yeah, true. His mana pool is pretty low. Only 700, but that's enough for, like, two ulties. And now the side of SFZ, yeah, I think. They're playing passive. Top of the net worth is Zai right now. <laughs> on this SK, and he's got a, vi a point booster, so he's going to be looking for possibly a straight Ags. I, I doubt that that'll be the Ags. The Veil of Discord's pretty good too, but eh, who knows? Maybe pull like I mean, what Blaze does. Zai has been involved in 11 out of 15 kills. Just goes to show how much like he's been very active on this hero, even before he got a blink. Like, it was mm -hmm. just in every team fight basically. And now that he has to blink, I wouldn't be surprised if he just go for, goes for a few solo kills here. He's going to try. I mean, he's looking, he's scouting out the camps, he's going to see the boar clearing one. If he moves up any further, which he doesn't. Okay. Just kind of lets that invis fade, and now he's just going to do a bit of counter jungle. Like, oh, or not! Alright, Zai, what are you doing, man? Very indecisive. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm going to go kill somebody. Yeah, I'm going to go over here and farm. Yeah. But at the same time, him just being not visible at all on the map, or, well, now they find him, but him just being not visible on the map before that just made scary faces really scared. They were hogging their tier 1 mid with four heroes so yeah scare faces they're just in a really bad position right now they can't really afford to lose any heroes before any engagement because they it's already difficult enough to fight 5v5 but if they fight with a disadvantage already they most likely gonna lose so it's in a really rough spot and they don't really have the best heroes to fight from behind i feel like the sniper hmm. yeah, it's his damage is not really you know it's just scratching well, Fissure's to hold off for a little bit. They're just going straight out to a tier 2. Secret man just really want to get this game over with. Just pushing the towers non-stop. They're going to sit in the shrapnel too. S4 are going to get poked a little bit by that snipe. And now, oh, the TP from Rams is going to be regretted immediately. They pop the split on top. He's lifted up and he's down. Fissure's stolen. They're going to get a Cyclone down to the Earthshaker. Going to control one of those Brulings up. But the spikes, will it be enough to save Eknard? He gets stunned up. We're going to see Arteezy pushing forward, just trying to use the Aegis, and the Echo Slam is good, but it's not enough. Kuro is going to stay alive thanks to that Shadow Word from the Warlock. And now, I mean, this is this is trying to be easy pickings for the side of SFZ, but they can't do it. They'll at least kill off the Golem, yeah. But that's a two-for-none trade. They lose a Tier 2, and it's... Oh, man. Not looking good right now. Even with the PL split pushing, it's not going to oh, be enough. Krista. Yeah, they, they oh, see God. him, but yeah, there's nothing to stop him. That was super close. Um, I like this decision from Quista to not join the team fight. I don't think he would have made much of a difference. He farmed up his Diffusal Blade on the top lane, pushed up the lane, and, you know, they have to go for something like this. Like, trading a few kills and a tower for this amount of farm is almost worth it for them, because that's the best trade they're going to get. Which is kind of sad if you think about it. <laughs> I guess. I don't want to think about it though. So, let's see. Kuro's just. Look at him. He blinks forward. Chunks twisted down to about half and he just goes on his merry way. I mean, he has to assert dominance, right? <laughs> yeah. So, Zai um, might like be in some trouble. Yeah, I mm -hmm. like the smoke blob. But not really the target they're going for. They kind of need to find uh, TZ. They can't kill Zai, so. They should find our TZ here? Smoke's gonna break. Oh my god, they just miss him. Uh, oh, they just miss him. That was so unfortunate for them. 
And this was a complete, like, the whole smoke rotation completely wasted. Illusion. And I kind of needed that, to be honest. They're trying to get okay, something. Look at the spikes to the wall. Oh, man. They get the fissure at least, but is there much follow up? No. Ramses can't even use this DD. Oh, jeez. Look at the net worth chart. Like, Rupik is more farmed than the sniper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's insane. Kuro. Going out of his mind right now. This is why you don't let him get Rubik. This is why you kind of ban it away in that second to third phase of the bans. And I mean, just playing so damn well. So, I mean, at the same time, it's really difficult to ban. You know, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's... everybody has like these signature heroes, and you know, really strong. But I think they should have. Yeah, they sh I think they should have banned it, considering they were gonna go for the Beastmaster. I think they should have banned it. But you know. Hindsight 2020. Um, <laughs> I think at that moment it was not the most obvious pick, I guess. Um, although it did fit the lineup pretty well. Oh, top lane. Axes. They don't have any vision though. Oh, but the fissure at the end of it. Roar. Oh, he just managed to get the strike out in time. Woo. So again, Zai playing with his life, playing close, living on the edge. He might turn around here. He's still got blink. Epi to yeah, channel. He uh oh. Here comes. Twist up, but he's like, ah, nice episode of Zai, and just runs away. <laughs> and now Puppy even drops a word. Wait, did they see me? But yeah. no, it was just Quista not being comfortable staying out that far. And yeah, Quista, I think he's doing a good job. Like, the way he farms and the way, the way he farms is good. Um, just being able to, you know, catch up in terms of farm. He's been struggling a lot. Sniper as well, obviously, but Sniper, he gets the jungle. Twista, he has to farm in the lane, so. Another fissure stolen, job. man. Oh. oh, now Eknar's kind of stuck between his own fissures. Oh, wait, never mind. He's walking through it. Just kidding. Parted like the Red Sea. So, that was interesting. Uh -oh. <laughs> There's so many so now, janky things that can happen with Rubik. It's pretty funny. Oh, yeah. I, I love the the interaction with the Firefly. Where he, like, he just rides his uh, staff. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, a witch. It looks really funny. Oh, his call looks really funny or too, because like, he he bops you with his uh, with his uh, staff. Oh, really? Yeah. I haven't seen that one. Oh. I like the the remnant when he steals remnant from from storm spirit. He has instead of like obviously instead of storm spirit, he has like little rubics that just you know yep. making poses. Mid lane looks like they initiate. Yeah, with a fissure, easy initiation. Fissure. They cross up the uh, fissures though, and yeah, it doesn't matter. They get the kill anyway. A little bit of a snipe onto S four. Kind of keep it in back, but. That's an easy pick, man. That's just the power of Rubik when he steals Fissure away from an Earthshaker. And you, you can see that the secret side aren't really too worried about that Earthshaker right now. Maybe once he has a Blink Dagger, but oh. they're going forward. Blink it from Kuro. They get the split. They're going on to Eknard. He should be going down. They even commit the Rock to this one, too. The Illusion's doing quite a bit of damage to Kuro, but he gets the heal up. It seems that the Brulings were enough to take down the Brewmaster. And uh, Lion dies on the side, too, so... Now a tier one push, and maybe Secret have just sealed the deal here, and uh, gonna get themselves to two and one in terms of their group play. That's the superior vision from Secret paying off. Like that one ward, Kuroki immediately knew. Okay, there's like two guys there, or even three. Immediate blink in Fisher, an immediate follow up. So, if Scary Faces had any wards whatsoever, they probably could have seen that coming, could have prevented that. But you know, you're in, in, in this sort of situation. You're not really in in a set of mind where you're like, oh guys, gotta keep vision up, you know. I just really scared at the moment, and Secret take complete map control at this point. And I'm surprised they're just backing off. I think they could have also just pushed up the top lane. Yeah, uh, whatever. They're gonna keep farming though. Uh, we got ourselves with Arteezy with 3,900 gold in his bank. What else could you look for now? I mean, just go straight Manta, just go straight S and Y. You can pick up a BKB now at this point. There's the BKB. Okay, never mind. I'm answering my own questions, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, th I think he's just uh, BKB, uh, just, you know, to play it safe. Like, technically, he could have also gotten a bit greedier because just the way they this game where all these team fights are happening or going down, he doesn't actually need the BKB as much. But, you know, just to be on the safe side, getting a BKB is never wrong. Roche is going to be up in... Oh, the Axe like, at 25 minutes for Puppy? He goes for these Midas builds and gets Axe so quickly. Yeah. Holy crap! Really good timing for him. That's perfect. And with this, these team fights are going to be such a nuisance. Luckily, they do have the fusel blade though, so if they need to, they can 
Okay. Approach these golden souls. They find Arteezy. They're going to snipe him, finger him, everything. But Kuro try to save him. They even commit the roar, and they do bring him down. But Kuro's wicked stick. They get a full epi on top of Ramsey's, but it's going to be not enough to take him out. And they finally kill off Kuro, and State gets a double kill. And now looking to finish off Zai the boar. Slowing him down just a bit. They get themselves the shrapnel on top, and Blakey forward. Zai should be dead here. Can he make it? He's limping. He's only four of his six legs, but Triple there you go. Kill. Triple four. kill for the sniper. Suddenly, he's the most farmed hero on the map. Wow, like, what, what the happens? What, what the hell? Like, seriously. Um, but yes, three really important kills. Uh, Secret King... had a 14,000 gold lead before that fight. And about a over 15,000 XP lead, too, so that's... Uh, you know I said that Arteezy doesn't even need his rubber band. BKB, sort of? He doesn't even get to use it. That's yeah, he just gets hexed and just killed. dies. They chain stunned perfectly on top. They layered it nicely. They well, they didn't layered it. They they sequenced it nicely. So, so many good kills. Like Lion has a blink now. Earthshaker is very close to his blink. This buys them so much time, and they get these crucial items up that they really need in these fights. Like Meltstrom is now up on the sniper as well. Beastmaster, he's oh, he's building towards the Ags. So that was super important for them and. Well, secret, I mean, obviously they're still in a dominating position and they can technically just, you know, Blink roar again take Roche Roche anytime they want to. No. They were kind of positioning for it. Uh, Roche is now up, like you said, and yeah. they can just go for it like they are. Four man smoke. Just leave Arteezy. No, they might oh. go for a kill first and then rotate back to Roche. Looking for I think, if you, I think they kind of have to go for a kill first, though, because SFZ has a, have a pretty good Roche fighting lineup with the Echo Slam, with the Roar, with even Sniper. Um, the shrapnel, getting it on multiple heroes is pr pretty crucial, so... Secret, looking for a kill oh. here. They should find it. Yeah. Do so they find the real Quista is the question? No, they actually left up the wrong one. Quista going to town, just doing a little bit of damage to Kuro, and now they find the real one, but they choose not to go in. Interesting. Yep. But, um... It's okay for Secret, I think. They can still go for Roche, because now they know where their enemies all are. Uh, they might even fake Roche. Nah, they have a troll. They can just take it. But they have a good hawk. Like, the Beastmaster hawk is pretty good here. Mm -hmm. uh, the hawk has always been good. We've seen a lot of Beastmaster today and uh, just seen the power of it. Fada played it first, but Echo Slam comes in with the blank. Eknar trying to do what he can. He gets lift up. He's telekinesis, but then the rock is dropped on a two. S4 blank and getting the split off. How do they deal with this right now? Puppy getting stunned up and the Dancer Relancer's Illusions from Quista picking up the kill. He's able to doppelganger onto the high grounds and now they're chasing. Getting a double spike knockup from Zai. Quista trying to kite and run away but there's no way he can get away from this right now. Doppelganger not up for another five seconds. He's got a juking and jiving towards the camp. He tries to get himself killed by the creeps and that's just a full wipe in the attempt at trying to stop Roshan. Um, what the hell? Yeah. 3,600 golds, 7,000 XP for secret, and that that is rough. I mean, I did say that SFZ have a good lineup to fight Roche, but at the same time, obviously, secret have an also really good lineup to fight in these narrow passages. And I, I believe SFZ ran into a Warlock ult with like four heroes or something, so... Oh my god, that hurt him a lot. Uh, Phantom Lancer also, he used the... He's a doppelganger and he jumped himself up onto the cliff and he was actually stuck there. Like the Beastmaster had to use his axes to free him. Oh really? And oh. Yeah, he was stuck on the high ground and that was really unfortunate. He couldn't actually deal enough, like, he wasn't quick on his damage as well. Just because of that. Like, he, yeah, his illusions killed off Poppy, but he could have dealt a lot more damage in that fight if he hadn't been stuck up there. It was really unfortunate. So now it's a Bloodstone actually for a Sand King. I thought he'd be going for... Ags or something like that, but I realized that Ags is probably not the best pickup, and this Bloodstone is really going to help him out a ton. Um, um, gen. This this is a really weird item build, in, my, blaze build. in my opinion. I, I don't know, I, I think Aghanims would have been fine as well, but I guess the Bloodstone is also not too bad. And now um, Kuro has pretty Ags. Nice. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Two second steals. He's been a monster without the Ags already. Let's see his micromanagement with these abilities. <laughs> and again, by the way, the stolen shrapnel in that fight killed the sniper. Really unfortunate. Quista. It's also pretty poor. He has a vitality booster. Ideally, this is going to be a hard at some point, but... Can't really catch a break. 
sniper building towards the BKBA, I presume. Rams, this is very close to finishing his own eggs. He's about 1,300 gold away. Uh, what else? Item wise, he said. BKB. I don't know, man. Both supports have their blanks, and it just seems like they just keep getting countered and engaged too hard once they try to blink it and force it. I mean, in an ideal situation, SFZ just burst down Puppy so fast that he doesn't even get his ult off, right? That's the ideal situation. But at the same time, you also have to be wary of then Kuroki stealing stuff. And then there's also Zai with his big ult, so... There's so many things they have to consider that I'd argue it is really difficult to win a teamfight against Secret unless Secret mess up big time. Mm -hmm. They have to sequence it pretty badly or, you know, stack up stuff that's not really... Oh, oh. Four. Roar, spikes, finger, everything, but there comes the counter initiation, the double rock in there. Eknar does come in with the echo slam, but Warlock Puppy picks up himself a kill. Now Artor Art is just going insane right now. He's finding himself a killing spree. He takes down the Earthshaker, and that's just going to be a two for one. But even off that one kill on the Panda, they still come out ahead oh, from SZ. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, he's getting caught out. So cocky, though. Like, he blinked forward, even. He blinked forward. He tried to steal tried a spell, man. Yeah. Ah, uh, that was an okay trade for Secret. They now got it's a bad trade. 1500 plus gold just off a of Kuro kill. And 3000 yeah. XP off him too, like, that's crazy. Which is how far behind they are, and this this graph should dip straight back up, like... It, it will after the kills and stuff are factored in, but... Quest is sitting on a, a value... Hmm. Okay, value vit. Yeah, it's just it's just one vitality booster before you build into a mentor. Um, but if he doesn't if he didn't have it, he would be too too squishy. He, he kind of needs it and with a mentor. It's 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 a very common build up. Um, going Yasha now, probably mentor then, and then just go into hard, or maybe even upgrade the diffusal blade. But in this kind of game, you kind of want to keep the charges. So he's probably not going to upgrade it until he actually uses the other four charges. Which is kind of sad for him because if he upgraded it now, his illusions would be insanely strong. But he kind of have to has to keep the charges because of that annoying warlock ulti. So, secret still pretty dominating. Fourteen thousand net worth on the troll. Artsy just running around like crazy. Again, like, he just goes into these fights, pops his BKB, and there, there's literally nothing that SFZ can do to respond. If they can't hex him before the fight, before the BKB, uh, it's, it's pretty much all over. And Quista, he's still working on his builds. That's, he's, he's only got one item in the defusal. One fully built item in the defusal. Yeah, but I think he's recovered quite well. He was very far behind at some point, but now he's he's recovered fairly well. Um, he said he's reached a point where he can be a threat to the enemy supports, actually. Like, Puppy and Kuroki, they can't really stand against these illusions at this point. And this is a kind of, you know, kind of state you want to reach when you're in PL. Um, at the same time, Sniper, he's also at the back line. And honestly, PL just needs to, you know, create a, create a lot of confusion, chaos for the Sniper to hit. He doesn't even need to be that big carry. Oh, blink it in. Finding a stun onto Eknar. They're going to commit for this right now, but the Roar actually going to stop Tinky Winky for a little bit. They get themselves the Rock stun onto three. They're going to chain up a lot of the damage here. The upheaval is on him. State 21. There's nothing he can do about this. He's going to get rushed down by the Brulings. Then a stun into Quista. Can they actually get this kill, though, is the question. The Hex to stop Artor for a little bit. They cycle it up the Lion, and now they're going in onto Ramses. Can they get this kill? It's just the Brewmaster by himself. Quista got a double kill, actually, but can't stop S4. And uh, S4's going kind to of left his own accords. He's stuck here without any mana. And it seems that Secret are going to lose this fight with a triple kill for the PL. That was, I would have to say, pretty sloppy. But actually, it's a 3 for 3 seeing as to how Eckhart popped back to come back into that fight. It was overly aggressive, I feel, from S4 to dive that deep. He des he desperately wanted to go for that kill. But, I mean, he, he dove past, what, tier 4 towers, even though that's still a tier 2 standing. So... Overly aggressive, but overall also a bit a good play from SFZ. That buyback from Urshak was actually needed in that uh, in that engagement, I feel. Just to get that kill in Kuroki and just a Fisher in general is a super strong spell to have in team fights. Mm -hmm. Well from here, like secret 
They're losing these minor skirmishes and like they're overextending hyper hard, so they don't want to risk throwing it at this point, I think. Yeah, and I mean, look at this, look at this uh, PL now. I mean, suddenly he has a mental style and a diffusal blade too. Suddenly he looks a lot more scary. Actually, where's his diffusal blade too? Oh, it's still in the Korea. Still, it's still in the Korea. He's maybe looking to use that last charge before anything. Who knows? Uh, I think at this point it's smoke. even more worth it to have it, uh, to have it on you. Like that one charge is not worth it. I feel. Just because your illusions, honestly, they just... Oh, blinking so forward, they find the roar in. They're going to be able to take down Puppy, it seems. Yes, they are. They get his kill. But now, turning around, Artur with the BKB active. Getting slowed up a little bit by the boar, but blinking in. Zai gets a two-man spike, and the haste rune will keep Ramses alive. But do they turn? They get the Spirit Lance in onto Artur. They get the Axis, too. Just so much damage on top, and Quista just going to town. Gets a dominating spree. Kuro can't get out of this fight now, even with the steal on the snipe, but that's it. Even with the Drunken Haze, S Force forced to use this split. And uh, can he find anything? One versus three right now. I'm not sure if he wants to do this. Yeah, he decides to back out, save the Earth Bandit, but wait, the Boar is on top of it, slowing him down. Rams is kind of body blocking him too. Hmm. Can they get this kill? Zai still waiting on the side. No epicenter. They're trying to stop him from being able to blink out, and they do. Oh god, is S4 gone? They use a roar again. And yeah, he's dead. S4 is gone. That's a four for one. How do SMZ this, they can, keep getting these fights? With this, they can take mid, uh, mid tier two at least. Honestly, there's a lot of things going wrong for Secret there. First of all, Poppy dies first, so that means there's no rock, there's no heal, there's no fatal bonds, which are actually pretty huge in those fights. Then Zai whiffs his ultimate completely, so there's no, you know, do 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 to get rid of these PL illusions, and then. Just secret in general just gets picked off one by one. Like it's not even a team fight at that point. It's just everybody dying one after another. So I think they just need to collect, uh, just, you know, regroup and just, you hey guys, let's just five men, okay? Let's just five men. <laughs> I don't even know right now. Like this game still seems like it can go either way, even with such a huge lead for secret. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? game like this set has all been intense like the c9 versus vp uh versus the aces polar set like that was good now sfz a team that i haven't seen play too much but it seems to be doing pretty well right now uh taking a game off a of secret and looking to try to win it out here from t game three but i mean look at this pl again i mean suddenly he's just 900 gold off from his uh heart like, mm -hmm. this is how much this game has swung um, he's doing super well for himself, the sniper as well. This is getting pretty scary for Secret, honestly. But at the same time, again, that last fight, it was literally everything that could, could have gone wrong for Secret did go wrong, so... Um, it's very unlikely to happen again, to be fair. Well, look at the net worth, the sniper's caught on up, the PL's caught up too. So they, they're on fighting terms, they're ready. Arteezy does pick up the Scotty though, and this is gonna make it a little bit harder for, you know, the PL to kind of stick on him. He's got a bit more stats now. I love what Zai's been doing though. He's been pushing out the side lanes like crazy and getting so much gold. He's also got 13 stacks in his Bloodstone and 3,000 more gold of his own. What does he go for here? I mean, I think he should go for a Shiva's Guard, Shiva's Guard or a Hex maybe. Um, I think they need something to, you know, um, they need a bit of more burst. They also need something to deal with the, with the sniper, ideally. He's just sitting in the back lines. He doesn't even need to use his BKB that much. I mean, he's used to BKB, like, what, once? So I think I they so. need to just threaten, threaten him a, more, a bit more. So a hex would be really good. Just additional disable. Yeah, they're kind of lacking a little bit of the disable department. So we got the heart finished. Oh jeez, Quista, gonna be so damn hard to kill. Now the illusions are a little bit tankier too. Twenty eight hundred health, ready to fight, and defusal too. Looks like SFZ want to group up and take top. Want to force the issue. I think they're in a really good position to take fights, honestly. But I think they shouldn't go. You know, they just shouldn't take them head on. I think they should just look for a pick off first and then take them head on. I think just to shoot a pick kind of styles with SFC you got to do, like, I don't know. Yeah, like, just I still kill. think they can win a fight flat up. It's going to nah, take a lot of kiting. Sure. The thing is, I'm really, I think 
the, the reason they won the last fight is honestly just because Puppy wasn't there at all. Like, he didn't do anything in that fight because he immediately died. And Puppy is a big part of the team fight. That rock hurts a lot, the fatal bonds hurt a lot. Even the slow is pretty huge in that fight, so... Well, secret, they just get Rush. I think this was like, what, 11 second Rush? Um, and with this, with this Aegis, they're gonna feel a lot more confident. And I wouldn't be surprised if SFZ just dodge team fights whatsoever now, just because, yeah, we don't really want to fight against Aegis. So the Illusions do their thing up top and keep pushing the PL. It sends them up there, they do get the tower. So, AC for the Brew coming out, he's going for the Battle Brew build, no eggs for him. And, uh, what else, what else, what else? Kuro, maybe getting his own Bloodstone with the Soul Ring. And Puppy, he's very close to his refresher. He's actually about a couple hundred gold away. I don't like this from SFZ that they're waiting for like... I mean, I do think they shouldn't try to force a fight now or a team fight right now just because I think they're, they would be at a disadvantage. But I think they should still look for some sort of pickoff or something. Because right now they're not even trading farm efficiently. You know, look, just look at how they're farming together. It's like two or three heroes stacked, out, stacked up on top of each other. Mm -hmm. Whereas on secret side, you usually have like one farming the ancients, one farming the jungle, one farming the lane. Um, so, I don't know, if, if this goes on, Secret is going to build up an advantage again, which I think is something that SFC don't want, just because, you know, they've been fighting to prevent that advantage from happening. I mean, they still have 50,000 gold ahead, so... Yeah, that's true, that's true, yeah. But, I mean, even building an even bigger advantage, obviously. <laughs> 25,000 gold advantage. Let's see. Still haven't used the ages yet. Yeah. Mm, I don't think... They're gonna... Actually, now that I say it, RTZ does go into the mid lane. Just taunting them. Come on, guys. I got... I got... I got Aegis. He know you want this. This piece of ass. Maybe... Yeah, this piece of ass. Maybe this refresher is what they wanted for Puppy. So now they have double rock and... Uh... Oh yeah, with the double rock they can fight this for sure. And he also has the cheese, so in case they do jump him, he can, you know, recover. Look at that damage coming in, just destroying this tower by himself. Popping the battle trash. He's one more. There you go. And he gets out just fine too. He's been in the last two games. He's young, he's used that helmet of Dominator to take over one of those ice ochres and just keeps giving him the ice armor. So it's a very interesting strategy. It gives him eight extra armor, that massive slow on attack, and or when being attacked. Oh, that's not an attack. That'd be OP. But uh, yeah, let's see. Can they defend? Fissure connects. No one's really looking to go out just yet. These illusions deal so much damage, it's actually ridiculous. We're getting there. He's getting there. Mjolnir now up on the sniper. Oh, PKB. The Mjolnir too is going to help out a lot. But he can't really risk going in. If he gets blinked on, he's he's almost guaranteed dead. But they are saving up for the buybacks. Let's see actually how many people have left. There's three for the side of SFZ right now. So Artur just going up top of the high ground, forcing out the glyph, and that's what they wanted. Two minutes left in the ages too. What this is so scary for both sides. Like, uh, even scarier for scary faces. They kind of want to initiate at some point, but at the same time, they need to get Puppy. They need to get Puppy and e ideally even Zai in that initiation. They need to kill both heroes Whoa. first. Oh, blinking in. Actually, he doesn't connect it with the clap though, but he does use the split. And now an Echo Slam, a huge Echo Slam, but he gets countered out by those rocks and by the stun from Zai. And Look at the damage go. They even force out the Aegis from the troll. And the sniper is forced to retreat back in towards the base. A primal roar comes in. Gotta do all the damage he can to burst down our tour here. Spikes, finger, everything committed just to kill him off. Doppelganger too, but he gets the BKB. The Echo Slam that was stolen by Kuro doing so much damage there. Turning around, forcing Sniper to buy back too. Eknar can't get anywhere near this. The upheaval just doing too much work slowing him down. Those rocks just destroying the racks right now, but they're not doing as much damage as they could be. So they go in, they're still chasing out this fight. Quist is forced to back on off with the Doppelganger. And their base has been exposed, but Kuro's going in for a little bit more. Gets the Fissure kill with the Telekinesis. Oh, man. And now Secret just decided to get out of there. Get the two for... The three for none with the buyback force out two of the Sniper. And, uh, and maybe even get a tier two tower top. Yep, yep they get it. Ah, uh, Quista, a bit of a misplay coming out from him. He was too busy fighting these heroes that he didn't... He completely forgot to purge the golems. Like He purged he one only, of them. 
<laughs> yeah, he, he put he approached one of them, but at the very end, um, which was very unfortunate. Like these golems deal a lot of damage, actually. So, a bit unfortunate and croaky again with these stolen spells, stolen aqua slam, pretty huge. And this is SFZ. This is not. This was not the fight that we're looking for. They need to get a better initiation or even a better counter initiation. And you could see that as soon as they got an echo slam on Puppy, everybody was like, "Hit Puppy! Hit Puppy!" Uh, like Sniper even went back into into the team fight just to hit Puppy, but they couldn't burst him down for uh, fast enough. He's just a little too tanky right now. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, and especially since he had the cheese as well. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Alright, he's waiting for a Refresher to get back on up, then we'll start pushing these towers down. I don't know, SFZ still holding on for just a little bit. And 3,800 more gold on Quista, does he just go B-Fly? It seems like not too bad of an option. He's got an Ogre Club, so I'm assuming it's going to be a BKB. But they're smoked up, they're ready to go 5 men and try to catch somebody off guard. I like this. They need to do this. They need to find a kill. But at the same time... Um... At the same time, Secret has to know this. This is happening, and they're grouped up pretty nicely as well. Oh, they find if they find Poppy, this could be huge. All right, they give the son of the puppy. They're gonna keep him chained down, and then the rock, the lock down from that damage is enough to pick him up. Questa beating away, and then they fight a kill onto uh... Zai. Wow. I mean, I say this is huge, but at most they're just gonna force out a buyback, and Puppy does have his old almost ready. Um, he doesn't have a refresher, but that's also not too far off, so... I'm not sure if SFC realizes this, though. Like, if they have the timings down correctly. I don't know. We'll see. The Fissure to block them out from Kuro coming on in, but... No ignores that. The Sniper. He's gonna keep using his absurd range and... Start chipping away. Let those illusions tank up a little bit, too. Mjolnir picked up by Aerotora. That's interesting. S4 popping the BKB with his split. Actually, in front of the base, he's gonna be able to get a Cyclone? On Quista? Okay. Is there any other follow-up, though, is the question. It seems like they're just going to kind of leave him stranded up there spinning for a bit. Yeah, they can't fight yet. And with this, they don't even need to buy back on Puppy. Um, I believe they didn't even buy back on Zai, so... Was pretty good for Secret. Stalling there was just a stolen Fisher, basically. But SFC, they still want to go for this. I don't see why not. Like, let's see. Well, technically, they oh, have everything up, right? Spike comes in, Zai's the initiated on, there's still no split, the Battle Trance comes on in, there's one rock, and then we see the second rock come out, the Echo Slam on top, there's the second rock! This is a huge fight for Secret right now, but Quista on a monster kill, able to take down the troll, they force a buyback out of Zai, Puppy out of mana, gonna retreat out, Quista out of health though, so he gets out of that one, gonna defuse one of them, he's got six seconds on the other charge while he gets chased out by S4, can he stay alive? He's getting slowed down so heavily, and Puppy gets a triple kill. The assassination isn't enough for S4 to pick up the kill with that snipe, and... <sighs> Secret hold on to their base just a bit. Fight recap can't even keep up at this point. Yeah, and I think this is the reason why they shouldn't have gone for that push, just because Puppy was back up and he had everything. He had the ult and the refresher, and it felt like they weren't really completely aware of that, or they were like... I, either that or they were just overestimating themselves completely. Um, you can't really push into a Warlock with has Refresher ult unless you pick him off first and they were in no position to go to Puppy first, so... Bit of a... I guess, yeah, the decision making here wasn't... I don't agree with it. Let's let's put it that way. And did SFC throw their only chance at breaking the high ground of Secret? Who knows? Uh, at least they got a Zai buyback. That's on cooldown for another five and a half minutes. So, I mean, at this point, it's just a battle to see who can get the perfect team fight. It really is. It really comes down to who has the better team fight, who has the better team fight initiation, I want to say. Whoa. They find Puppy. Okay, this might be an easy kill. Shrapnel on top with Fissure, too. Gonna drop with the spikes, and that's gonna be an easy kill for Status. He's on a killing spree still. Mm. I mean, getting a kill on Puppy is good, but he doesn't have old or refresh orb up anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Unless SFZ realizes that and go for Roche, who's up by the way. Um, force out a buyback at least from Puppy. A little bit of scouting going on there, but... Alright. Roche, this is the second Asians and Cheese. They're going to be pushing up mid. They did enough damage to the tier 3, so... Hmm. They're not running really in a position to take Roche, so just be Well, I guess they could. Um, Phantom Lancer is rotating in. But no, looks like they just want to go high ground. 
I mean, now it's, it's not a bad timing considering Puppy doesn't have anything up for another 30 seconds. Yeah, does Puppy even have buyback? Uh, he, he does have does. buyback. Okay. He does have buyback. They got a bit of a oh, stun Zai. there on a Zai. They're going to be able to chain everything together. The roar comes in from Kuro, though, and uh, it does seem that State will be able to take down Zai. That was his buyback from the last fight coming in, too. They're going to focus out onto State quite heavily. S4 still chasing him down, still has the split available. They can't interrupt it. So a bit of a stun coming in while Quested is diving in onto Kuro. He's going to be doing so much damage here and trying to actually man mode in. It's Artur Tor. Look at him go. The damage coming in with the help of the Fizzer. He's going to be able to take down this kill, it seems. Oh, man. Arteezy, is he dead? No, he's not. Oh, the rock saving his life. Arteezy is going to be able to get out. No, the snipe picks up the kill. They force a buyback out of Kuro. Puppy doesn't have the refresher up for another 10 seconds. They're going to just stop him for now with the Fizzer. And everybody's going to TP back home, it seems. Can S4 stop him? No, he cannot. And Rams is, is going to be able to blink time just fine. And still somehow, SFZ holding on to the hope of pushing down mid. Getting a big swing of gold and getting a big swing of XP. But Roche not scouted just yet. No one's going to scout. Didn't get a tier, tier 3, though, unfortunately, no. for SFZ. But that was a good fight for them. Picking off... Uh, Zai first and then Kuroki and then Arteezy was that was the right like order of kills they should have gotten and um Quista playing really well that fight like realizing how far he can extend and knowing okay I'm gonna be dead but at least we get Arteezy out of this so well next push is gonna be a very performed sniper if you look at the if you look at the net worth well, if, if you look at his gold, he has 6k in his bank right now. Yep. Just waiting for probably Butterfly. Straight Rapier? <laughs> or he yeah, actually he could go for a Rapier, yeah. I wouldn't object to be, to be honest. He's never in range for a uh, Warlock Ultimate anyway. And, and uh, he's not going to go for a Rapier, is he? Uh, he's flying the career out already, so it's probably going to be a Butterfly. Uh, let's see. He gets the Demon Edge. Maybe an he MKB. Gets Demon Edge. Nah, maybe an MKB, yeah. Or crit. He gets the Mischance. A mischance against Brewmaster and um, the troll, but he should save for buyback. Obviously, like yeah. he shouldn't spend his money just yet. Secret, they're gonna rotate into the Roche pit, and SFZ. They're not really in a position to contest this. It would take them too long to get there. And Secret, they have good vision. This one ward on the bottom lane is actually pretty good. Um, they would see it if SFZ rotated in, and, and SFZ. They're not even aware of this. Actually, they are because there's a hawk, but. You know, just troll things. Yeah, it just destroys yeah. this. Yep. So, Artur is going to get the Aegis. We're going to have S4 picking up the uh, cheese, maybe? No, actually, nah, he's going to die. He's died too often in these fights. It's actually... I think he was at some point 5-0 or something, but he died too often, I feel. Oh well, SFC. It, it, it's incredible how they fought themselves back into this game, honestly. Yeah. At this point, like... They just need to wait out this next Aegis. And uh, try to fight with that. I mean, unless the Secret un overextend again. And they just pop the Aegis for free. Then we could see, like, you know, SFZ just look to push down immediately with that. Otherwise... I mean, Secret's still in that driving seat. Yeah. They're probably gonna push in with this Aegis like they did last time. They have everything up right now, and if you push in, it's gonna be really difficult for SFZ to find these initiations on these heroes like Zai or like the Sand King, the, the Warlock, or even the Rubik, which they kind of want to. Um, because in those pushes, it's gonna be S4, it's gonna be ITZ in the front lines, and it's gonna be really difficult to get behind that. So, yeah, a secret. They even smoke up, I like this a lot. I mean, it's fairly obvious that they're sitting right behind them, but you know, why not smoke up? The fish in a oh. block. Will it give us some confidence to go into this fight? Yeah, look at the sniper go. Just doing so much damage. We're going to have ourselves a snipe in and a pause as some lag hits the server. Everybody gets oh, okay. that. I yeah. thought it was just me. Yeah, yeah, well, holy yeah. I was like, wait a minute, am I lagging? Hello? <laughs> but yeah, that was a good fisher. Um, forced out the forced out, but yeah. Just forcing secret back a bit as well. And now they also obviously realize that they're smoked up right behind him. SFZ, how can they take this fight? At some point, I think they should go for some cheeky play where just like Earthshaker's back stabbing them or something. Um, because they definitely need they need to prevent Puppy from dropping the double uh, the double the double 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 golem, or actually the quintuple golem. 
Hmm. Okay. Um. I guess we gotta wait for the slag to kind of dissipate. Are they good? Oh, maybe. Okay. Look at. They should be good to go. I think. All right. So at this. Oh wait. Hold on. Everything's still lagging, but they're able to run away. Okay. See that's gone. And that was pretty risky. They almost just lost the Aegis there for free. Hmm, they are smoked up still though, and they're gonna heal Artur back up to full. Hmm. And they're gonna keep stealing these ancients, but either way, Secret wanna push their advantage. They wanna get this open set of racks. How do they approach? Yeah, they can they can just do the same thing again. Just put the put the troll on the front lines and you know troll and brewmaster and having Puppy and Zai sitting in the back lines backing them up with their big ultimates. Um, at the same time though, these PL illusions are proving to be such a nuisance right now. Just because they also have the talisman of evasion, so it's actually not that easy for Arteza to clear them since he doesn't have an MKB. Yeah, the sniper did pick up an MKB of his own though, so we'll see. Uh, Shrapnel's gonna delay them quite a bit and be pretty annoying for the poke-wise. SF, actually, S4, excuse me, just goes in with that blink dagger and just pops the split. He's gotta be really careful about dying, but... BKB coming out from Artori, still blocked by that fissure. We're gonna see ourselves a finger on a puppy. The snipe committed to Echo Slam onto only one person, and that's Artor. But they kill Puppy before he can get off any of the rocks, and he's gonna TP back in towards this fight. And S4, no split, just BKB up. That's gonna be one set of rocks going down. Quistle still very tanky right now, upheavaled. Can he doppelgang out of this? Is the question. Yes, he can. He avoids a little bit of the epicenter damage. He's still fighting so viciously with the Earthshaker actually buying back after he died. And it seems that this set of racks should be going down. State trying to do what he can. He's actually caught out. He's going to be stunned up. He's going to go down. Upheaval on top two. And Kuro stealing the Echo Slam. Blinking forward. Finding so much damage. Eknar going to go down. The Sniper buying back two. Everybody's buying back. This is just an insane fight. All back and forth. With the Beastmaster buyback and the Sniper buyback. It seems that Secret's damage is done. They're going to choose to back out. And find themselves a gem that was on the deck. Nobody going to pick it up. No, they choose to go back into this fight it seems. Roar coming in. Fissure out. Quiz is still fighting it up. S4 gonna actually drunken haze state make him just try to miss a little bit but the mkb gonna go through it quista finds a kill on the puppy he's in the back of this fight the entire time and falls finally he buys back there's no buyback for the sniper this lion does respawn he tps and actually cancels the tp immediately but that's both cores losing their buyback and secret taking a huge fight and ram's just going for some more what are you doing man he's by himself the fisher not connected from kuro and it seems that after all that action Secret, they come out relatively unscathed with only a buyback on a puppy. Yeah, this... Again, like, the fight started out nicely from SFZ. They immediately tried to go for puppy. Line even sacrificed himself completely just to burst on puppy. They did it really well, but then puppy was like, yeah, I have buyback and boots of travel, so I don't really care. And from there on out, this SFZ is just losing the fight because they couldn't really deal with any of these golems. They couldn't really deal with the troll too well considering he has ages and they pass on the cheese so he kind of had to kill him three times basically and yeah SOZ cutting their losses Killing, losing the sniper twice was actually huge uh, so well, but at least they only lost one side of Rex right like this could have been a lot worse yeah it could have been like last game where they lost two immediately but all right if the sniper or the PL die in the next fight that's it that's probably game so gotta be very careful yeah, and the bad thing is, like, PL spent a lot of money as well just because he had to buy back, so set him a bit back considering his uh, butterfly, but now at least he can buy out because he doesn't even have buyback anyway, so he might as well just buy out. Oh, Shadowblade for Puppy, hello. Oh, I like this a lot. I like this a lot, just sneaking in for an ult because they're not gonna, they're not gonna, you know, see it coming. They don't, actually, they do have a gem, but they don't have neck for books, for example, so unless the Beastmasters. Just in a good position, they're not going to see it Do coming. We find ourselves in a base race scenario. All five members of SFZ are up here. Never mind, it's just PL for ones. yeah, for scary phases. Yeah. I, uh, phases I hope they don't because you don't rat <laughs> against the troll. SF, like they're just blinking into the base. It's like, all right, guys, it's all clear. I'm going in. And all right, Glyph is not available for the Radiant team, so. These towers are just going to absolutely melt. Rams is caught off. He's going to get Telekinese. They do find a spike in. State TPing into a really unfortunate spot. S Force just demolishing him. The Golem's coming out too. The Rock's just killing him. Oh no, that's game. That's game with the Sniper dead. Quista's still trying to hold on just a bit by killing off Kuro. 
but he can't do it. The split comes in. He's gonna get stunned up, locked down. He's trying to chase out as much as possible. There's an Echo Slam from Echnard, but the Echo Slam from Curl trying to slow down Quista, but Puppy got a double kill, and Dow goes the Earthshaker, and then there's a Cyclone in onto Quista. They just completely ignore him up. So, there you have it. That's probably gonna be game three, as Quista the last man standing without a buyback. Trying to lure them outside of the base. Puppy just drops the secondary rock, and that's gonna be a full five-man wipe for the, only the buyback of the Rubik ends. GG should be called. Uh, this is for sure a secrets game. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, um, well played from both sides, and honestly, quite impressed with how SFZ was able to bounce back. I mean, I think it's a completely different situation if you are ahead and keep that advantage. Um, that's one thing, but, you know, getting coming back from a huge disadvantage is another. So, well played to them, and Team Secret, I believe, advanced to the off to the land finals i'm not sure actually. they're two and one in the group i believe i, I had yeah, everything open but i forget that's, that's pretty that's pretty much land finals cool so that does it for the cast today uh that was all the star ladder that i could bring you <laughs> and uh hope you enjoyed i'm egad already